Do you know what I think SolidWorks and SolidWorks Simulation are really good at? Idea generation, that is coming up with new ideas and being able to test them quickly. It gives me the tools inside SolidWorks to model up an idea, not necessarily have to commit to the geometry, but also the ability to, to test that idea, even if it's a complicated or a complex idea, one or the other. So to illustrate that, imagine a complex diaphragm washer made out of a pretty complicated material, a very hyperelastic material. It's very easy to come up with multiple ideas and test them, and it takes very little time. And that's what I like so much about using SOLIDWORKS. So one of the tools would be an equation-driven curve. So this curve allows me to write an expression. We'll do uh, 1 quarter pi uh, cosine x. So that's, that's a pretty straightforward uh, expression. But we'll bound it between particular values, we're working in millimeters here. And we can see how easy it is to generate that, that mathematical expression into a piece of sketch geometry that can then be turned into something else. So we'll use some surface geometry, for example. Use a revolved surface, and I can take that, and there's my, my shape. And it's all parametrically driven, so I can iterate through multiple ideas quickly. Uh, but we're going to use this to start with. And we'll take this and we'll, we're going to thicken it using our surfacing tools. We'll thicken it a uh, quarter millimeter in each direction. So now I have my first concept, my first approach at a washer. And I want to test this for sealing capabilities, but I have no idea what the geometry is going to look like that's going to be sealing between these, uh, uh, with this diaphragm washer. So uh, I'm going to use my simple modeling techniques again inside SOLIDWORKS to come up with some geometry. I, I have a rough idea, and we're going to leverage one of the, the best tools, I think, that designers have available to them, and that is multiple solid bodies in one part uh, and still be able to leverage the power of SOLIDWORKS simulation. So we'll impose a little bit of a gap here, and then we'll finish uh, detailing this off like so. Okay. So now I'm going to have multiple solid bodies by unchecking this, and now I have a plate to compress against this, and I have to design a seal. I'm not exactly sure what that looks like, but again, I don't have to commit to this geometry uh, fully yet. I can change things up working inside this type of, of modeling environment. Some people call this the master model technique. But then we get to the point where I want to test it. And testing it, if we take a look at what I've modeled here, uh, testing it means that I'm going to compress the seal. I'm going to see how this diaphragm style washer is going to seal. Now, these might be metal parts that are going to lock up with each other, but this is going to be some sort of rubber gasket or maybe a plastic gasket. We haven't necessarily committed to how we're going to manufacture it or the materials we're going to manufacture it off of, but we do want to perform an analysis to see how it seals. Because I think I'm going to use a complicated material that's going to expand a lot under a fair amount of lighter loads uh, or moderate loads, then I'm going to have to use a nonlinear analysis. But because of all this nice surface geometry here. Is this going to be a complicated analysis? Well, it doesn't have to be because everything's circular. Uh, the plate's going to be loaded uniformly. I can take advantage of what's known as 2D simplification. This particular type of 2D simplification is called axisymmetry. So it uses a section plane. We'll use the front plane. And an axis, which I've already put between two planes, to give us just a pie wedge, or not even really a pie wedge, just a 2D slice uh, into our model. And here's the problem definition. So I don't really care so much what happens to the metal parts. We'll just make them out of some generic steel for now. But where am I going to go to get appropriate nonlinear material data for this seal, this, this washer? Well, that's where, again, the power of SOLIDWORKS comes in, especially with the relationship with materiality.com. I have to be a subscription service member in order to access this, but I click here and I go to a web page, mymateriality.com. It's a fantastic web page. It's really easy to use. Matter of fact, it already knows the type of study. I just want to tell it the type of material I'm going to use. I'm going to use a hyperelastic material, and I want to look in a particular category or class of rubbers. And then I can look within there, and I can use a natural rubber, or I can maybe even use this neoprene. And it's going to search for me and locate materials. Now, this is great. So I hear of a, a 60 durometer neoprene that I can use, but I also have a lot more than just that. I have tons of great data, raw data that generates the stress drain curves, and then I can download that as a SOLIDWORKS material file. Very easy to use SOLIDWORKS material file. I've already done that, so I'm going to save that material file, and then I can use it from this point going forward 
there's the exact same material data that we saw from the web page inside SOLIDWORKS simulation, including all the curves that we need to generate this material. So once I apply that material, I need to put in my boundary conditions. We're going to deflect this plate. That's a lot easier than trying to apply some sort of force, since all we're doing is a simple compression test. We know what that gap size is. So I'll show you what we've already set up. So first of all, there's some imposed gap between the bodies. And SOLIDWORKS has a general purpose contact condition called no penetration. And even though these aren't touching, we're going to get a bit of a warning. However, the software is going to be able to resolve these contacts pretty nicely, pretty easily. Again, I don't know the force required. I can measure the reaction force after the fact. So instead, since I know the gap that we need to close in, I'm going to apply a reference geometry restraint. Simply choose this edge with respect to the face that we're using for symmetry and apply the amount of displacement. Very, very simple. We know it's going to stop and close up at that gap there. We'll fix the bottom part and then we have to mesh it. And this is where I think things get really nicely expedited. I can apply very dense mesh controls into this model and still solve this within a very reasonable amount of time. We'll go ahead and show you the mesh. You can see how dense the, the washer, the diaphragm washer is. And again, it only takes about 20 seconds to solve on my laptop. So I have a lot of time yet in the day to come up with new ideas uh, document my findings, and ultimately hone in on a concept that we're going to start taking possibly towards production. So let's go ahead and run this. Again, 20 seconds, and the results we'll take a look at. First of all, the average stresses. And I can see where things are, are contacting, how the shape is going to change. I can animate that. And I can save these results, the animations, the stress plots, uh, even things like reaction forces in a format that other people can use. So if we plot our result force, we can plot it with respect to time. And here on this other window is our reaction force with respect to time. So the time here is a pseudo time of 100% loading. That's very nice. So this is why I think SOLIDWORKS and SOLIDWORKS simulation is a great uh, creation tool for ideas, idea generation, and testing. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment on the blog.